Hello ladies and germans, how you all doing? This is Connor. we're coming to you with another Company of Heroes 1v1. That was very, very fast, but you know, if you're here guys, you know what you're watching. Of course, you recognize the guy up here from the north. He is playing the Veramocked Forces. It is the Blue Trunk Troops of Sh -sh Shaker. And down here in the south, playing the USF, it is the Red Trunk Troops of Wada Tittendox. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. This is a Shaker game, so therefore he won, right? Well, that's not entirely true. Shaker has sent many games, excuse me, of course, has been a game sent in by him. But he has sent me many a game in which he has not won. I have just tried very, very hard to paint the best picture possible for the man of his particular talents. Nevertheless, it is going to be Angoville. So you guys all know this map by now. Of course, we have the God House right here, and we have a God House right down here, too. And the western side of this map is nice and wide open. It is just wide open spaces. Look at that. Look at that view. Look at that view. It's almost too much to be, you know, ruined by a battle. But yet, that's going to be the case now, isn't it? Um, taking a quick look at commanders before we get too much further into this. Titan Tox is going to be bringing in Airborne Company, as well as Armor Company, and Heavy Cav Company. So, I'll look to see a lot of Collins coming out from Titan Tox. Shaker, for his own part, is going to bring you in mobile defense, elite troops, and a mechanized assault doctrine. So, again, a lot of different columns on both sides. Um, not entirely sure how the, how the commanders will match up just yet. We will see Titan Docks going for a trip rifle opening, and Shaker going for a double MG opening with a Grenadier squad for support. Um, we will notice that the Germans are moving off to the west, looking to move away, and play to their strengths, really, of having these machine guns. Because Shankling might, well, though you might think differently, putting machine guns in these houses, while it controls a lot of area, doesn't really utilize the machine guns to their full effectiveness. I mean, over here, you're controlling a huge area as opposed to a couple of fire lanes, and that's something you always should be considering whenever you're placing said machine guns. Riflemen do have a quick meeting engagement and decide it's probably better for us to back away slowly and pretend we were never here. Unfortunately for them, they do leave one of their number lying dead on the ground. I can't quite find that model just yet, but he's there, I promise you. Um, and in the meantime, the Americans are going to slide up forward and probably even take the German expansion VP. And that that would be an issue, though. Another Grenadier squad coming out for the Germans, so Shaker looking to spend a fair amount of time in Tier 1. Mirror Echelon is going to dive into this house. Breaking windows. Guys, you know what? I don't care if you're fighting a war. You don't go and destroy people's property. That's just that's just mean. Just mean. Come on. It's going to be a tank and spank, though. Rear Echelon's going to take the attention while the rifle move in to, to push back said MG. I managed to do that rather effectively, taking out a couple of models as the guys amble back through negative cover. And Shaker has given up of a couple really, really strong garrison positions, but he's using that right now to dive in deep and really be pulling back the Americans... Maybe even to take out a strategic point? No, instead he's just going to dive into this house, and that would be just a strong position for him as well. With the machine gun, could we see a suppression happen? I don't know. It might be a little bit too quick for them to get out of that firing arc. Never mind, someone does get suppressed. Better than being depressed, but it's getting suppressed. Um, but now there's a mortar on the field as well. So things are good, more or less, for the Americans, but it's not going to be 100% just yet. In fact, all Shaker's looking to do is just decap out and frustration um, resource cuts against the U.S. If you look right now, the U.S. has 11-7 coming in. Shaker by himself, yeah, he's only got 32-20, so it's not like it's a huge big deal. But he's removed the tie, so now there's a, there's a drain coming out for the Americans. He's moved all resources, so the entire eastern side of the map is completely useless. Um, and he's really playing this rather well, I have to admit. I mean, it's only four minutes in, but a very, very good modification here. Grenadiers, though, will be pushing back the Americans on retreat, but Shaker getting out of that VP just before he takes a little bit unfortunate there. Do we see a tech up at all? No, have we, have we seen a tech up just yet? Okay, no, so Shaker has teched up to Battle Phase 1. Not 100% sure what his build decision is going to be, but we will see... His own resource troubles now as the riflemen do sneak in behind him and frustrate his own generation. Uh, regardless, though, I think he's in a slightly better position than the Americans. The Americans might be getting a, a tiny bit more fuel, but he's much closer to retaking his position than the Americans are. And in fact, he's right back in it right now, isn't he? 
Um, grenadiers are going to get frustrated by this house. And machine guns are set up as well to really put a ton of pressure on the house, but it's not going to really do overly much in terms of HP damage. Yes, it's going to start biting us slowly, but it's like a slow nibble more than anything else. And with his grenadiers being closer, the rifleman will actually auto-default to target the grenadiers as opposed to the machine gun, which is out in the open. So nice manipulation of the of the AI on that one. Not that that's any easier for the grenadiers to put up with. Those guys are getting hammered like crazy. And now we're finally going to see the machine gun itself taking some hits. Uh, so let's look to see a couple of models getting dropped here. No, instead, finally, the, the riflemen are going to back away. A soft retreat, really, just out of this house. It's going to be a hard retreat any second, though. One model goes down. Is Tittendox really going to be paying attention here? No. Could he go down? We could be. We could see the first blood really happen. Yep, first blood to the Germans. The Americans are trying to go for a frustration decap over here, taking out this field point, and really calling in their captain early on. So... Um, will we see a Stewart is the question. Is that is that really going to be the only play? I would really like to see personally something a little more interesting than just the complete immediate Stewart rush. And right now, here's a good point also I should be mentioning. The um, Shaker's first anti-tank gun. The second he wants to build one, he's gonna, it's going to rush out just like that. Um, this is something I mentioned a couple days ago in another video about how the Germans are constantly trying to find a way to get rid of that early, early American fighting vehicle advantage. Especially the Wehrmacht. The Wehrmacht doesn't have a whole lot of, of answers early on other than just maybe building a pack. Now, Shaker, when I spoke to him recently, made a comment about trying to utilize the bulletins that he's got. His AT guns get produced 50% faster, which means the first one that you build is going to be out super fast. Like, ridiculously fast. Like, so fast it's going to make your head spin. Um, but he instead he's rolling out with two 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 twos, and now that there's a Stewart on the f coming on the field, I imagine we're going to see that rushed anti tank gun. I guess he's just looking to get a lot quicker anti infantry, at least for the immediate future. Too many to take a quick sip or something there. Got myself a nice little glass of port going on. Feeling classy today as I record. 222 is going to push back two different squads of infantry and is now going to rush away, I would say, from this zooked up captain. Second 222 is right in the area, though, too. So while the captain might get himself another round off, no, he misses for one, and that's going to be a golden days for the 222s. Though he's dropping a couple of, of territories up over here, and he's behind in fuel by quite a bit now. Um, he still does have two victory points on the field, 470 to 4 to 458. And that pack, you can just watch it right now. Let's look it up here in the corner. He's really flying in. I mean, look at this. It's like, whoop, super quick, super quick. And I can't really, there we go. Trying to draw attention up here. Um, half the time is a super, super fast call-in. So now what's going to happen, you see the 222s two two are probably going to be um, playing chicken with the Stuart, trying to lure it in. See so the Stuart moonwalking his way into combat over here. Things like, yo, dude, there's nothing those Fairmont can do to me. They've got, like, Panzerfaust, who gives a rat's buttocks. And now the first 2 two is like, oh my gosh, I must run away. I am going to wonder, is this, yep, it is anti-AP um, incendiary rounds coming out from that machine gun. Question is, will he drop that last guy in the unit? Uh, that's close, but he makes it out just barely. The two, two, twos. One crew. One guy gets crew shocked, and that Zook is probably gonna take him out. Yep, there he goes. So the two, two, two does drop. The pack 40 is over here, so the steward's gonna charge. No, if, apparently Titan Doc says, "I'm not falling for that one again." Titan Doc, in the meantime, has decided to go for that heavy calf company. So look for the late game Pershing coming out. And with Angleville being the size map that it is, which is to say not that huge, um, that is a big force multiplier. In the meantime, we're going to see riflemen are going to start uh, locking down. I can say locking down this maybe, but really put fire, perhaps, instead on these Grenadier squads. And Tintox, surprisingly enough, is going to go for a second steward. 
Not sure that's really the right play on this point, but hey, again, Boo Boo, that is him, not me. Uh, Shaker, is he teching up? No, he's not teching up yet. He still has, he has more than enough material to do so, but he's not, I'm not sure why he's not. Um, I'm sure he'd be able to uh, enlighten us on that one. He generally tends to watch the, the cast that come out. So, Shaker, of course, don't hate me for asking questions. Hate me for not being intelligent enough to figure out your game plan. The surviving 222 is hunkered down over here in this pack 40, even though it's been super quick to be built onto the field. He's going to take a fair amount of pressure from these rear echelons on this captain. Really, only the MG42 is keeping him in the fray here. 222 is going to be able to kind of force back the captain, assuming he doesn't get a rounder off. And it's, indeed, might even see getting a pin coming out here. No, no pin. So we're going to see the machine gun getting slaughtered by that mortar. Same thing happening over here. Rounds impacting all over the place. Was that a grenade coming off from these guys? No, it wasn't, but it might as well have been. And the Stuart continuing to run rampant. In fact, it's the second Stuart now on the field, too. The Shaker's got to get something on, on get something together here. He is going for Pegrens. So maybe he's looking to stall out until he can actually call in double Shreks on them? I'm not sure. I don't think that's really the right play. There's a second pack, though. Here we go. So he drops the Pegrens, go for a second pack. And I think that's a better idea here. Even remotely lure in the Stuarts, and you can dominate them with one, two salvos of the pack 40, and that's that's more than enough. Disappointing me a little bit is that Titan Docks is not, first of all, not taking this fuel point when he had troops right over there in the area, and second, not decapping this fuel point. Might see something happen. It could be even the Stuart crew running over here into the fuel point and then hopping out to repair and decap. Be another way to get about that. Um, but I think Titan Docks is missing a couple of opportunities so far in the field. The state of the game right now, 441 to 437. 12 minutes and 18 seconds by the time I finish this sentence. Into the game. Shaker's still not gone for any commander. He doesn't know what his opponent has picked. There's not been a lot of mines being placed. There hasn't been any kind of smoke barrage coming down. Definitely hasn't been any rangers coming out on the field, and that's probably lucky for him because his troops, I feel, will get savaged by a close-in firefight. Think about Shaker's troops again. To commander choices, uh, well, commander opportunities, that's what I meant to say. Mechanized Assault, I continue to think that's probably the best of his three choices. Uh, the Tiger Ace is always great, but you have to wait forever to get there. Um, I'd probably go Mechanized Assault if I were him. Uh, it gives the opportunity to call in that half-track, which continue to support your troops in the field. Um, New unit ready and, on the field. and now the second he sees these Rangers, he knows what he's up against, which means he should be able to so effectively select... Effectively select a commander for the operation. Pack 40 is going to cover this machine gun over here to the west, and I imagine we'll see a Stuart pushing over to do to cover that as well. And a Pack 40 over here, almost back in base, just kind of hunkering down, looking to give a surprise to any very, very aggressive Stuarts. And 13:30 into this game, it looks like it's going to be a two-to-one cap in favor of the Americans, especially with. Oh, never mind. Rangers have been called into the field. Especially with those double stewards going out right now. Even though the packs are on the field, it's not going to do a whole lot to really cover that position. See, right now, the stewards are just going to circle straight this pack 40 into oblivion. Poor guy. Never really had a chance, not did he? Titan Docks getting out of the line of fire. Never mind. I thought he was going to get out of the line of fire. What are you doing, bro? What are you doing? And somehow, in two shots, takes out the pack crew. Now, Thompson's now been put on top of that, um, what's, what term am I looking for here? On top of the Rangers, there we go. Those are the guys I'm thinking about right now. Um, but that's not going to do a whole lot of good if it can't get inside those machine guns, and that's going to be a very, very difficult idea. A 2, two, two in the meantime, is going to draw out the other Stuart and a rear armor hit. Oh, gosh, that's a harsh... Harsh to see. Engine damage on top of that Stuart, though. Can the Pack 40 do enough damage? It's got a huge amount of range. One more round will do it. One more round will do it. What is he doing? He's backing. Why is he backing away? Why is he backing away? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Probably because of the charging rifleman and this captain. Um, but the German mortar doing work. They just take out like six models in a couple of rounds. Yeah, he's got six models down already. Pushing back that American um, assault almost single-handedly. HMG in the meantime, putting down fire on top of these Rangers, and his other machine gun gets redeployed at all. Will savage this advance. Okay, one getting the work done, and now they're going to crawl across an open field, getting pinned. Yep, that was bound to happen sooner or later. Watch the Rangers retreat in just a second or two. And when I talk about the New York Rangers, but so, so help me God, those guys did not do so uh, sterling the last couple of uh, seasons now, have they? We will see that the machine gun gets forced away by BARs and the Stewart. So kind of, again, massive, massive American investment to really push away some of the most light of applied pressure from Shaker. And Shaker now is going to go for that mechanized assault doctrine. He's calling in a Stug E. And although there's a couple of Zooks on the field, uh, the Stug E with a short barrel howitzer should be enough to, let's say, at least inconvenience the Stewarts. And that's a big deal right now. He is down about 70 tickets. Not a huge amount necessarily, but he's doing pretty okay. Probably can call in a second one if he wants to, and in fact, I will kind of do so. I think a second assault gun, as well as the two packs, is be more than enough to really, really settle the issue in his favor. And there is that second one, with machine guns to suppress infantry, a couple of grenadiers to really be locking things down. Um, and a steward apparently dying that I completely missed. So please forgive me on that one, folks. Oh, that's what it was. He was right over here, so... The pack just was able to get some nice obvious shots on him. Um, things are back in his favor. In fact, I mean, even the Stug E. Good gosh, how I... You know, I, I look away for like every second I look away, an infantry unit seems to go down. So three losses going down in about 30 seconds. First it's a tank, then it's a rifleman squad. And there goes the Stuart on the other side of the map. Dear God, what is going on here? Titan Docks is crumbling. Under it's just uh, a huge bit of fire. Right now, the rear echelons and the captain are trying to desperately fight off these grenadiers, and they seem to be doing so at least moderately effectively. Piney's running forwards, grabbing the mortar, and that is something I've been saying to people for quite a bit of time. When your opponent gives you a material, use it. Right now, those rangers have just managed to decrew that pack, but do not seize it. Do not try to put any kind of fire on top of the stroke that's pushing it away. That just made him retreat. And indeed, we see Tittendox has now gone down about 25 army supply. And now he's desperately outgunned. He's got two squads. <laughs> he's only on a smoke barrage. Not sure that's the greatest idea right now, but I mean, cool. I'm trying to make sure I guess his troops don't get uh, completely masticated by the machine guns. Uh, but this fallback, largely across the entire map, really except for this BAR there and a BAR there, is allowing the Germans to really reseize a lot of lost control. Hmm. Kind of worried a little bit too that if they wanted to, the Germans could probably isolate this squad of infantry over here and take them out super quickly. It seems only lucky that they have not already done so. BAR has got to re, uh, excuse me, machine rather has got to reassess his position. It realizes that against a BAR, he doesn't have a whole lot of hope. Another stroke E is shifting over here to the west. If for absolutely no other reason than to put pressure on top of the American position. And it seems if you are an American soldier right now, you are fighting no matter where you are. Machine guns suppressing these Rangers yet again. And frankly, they need to pin these rangers. These are the most dangerous troops on the field right now. Screw that, that bazooka. Who cares about that bad boy? Those rangers are deadly, deadly close fighters. I've seen that happening in a um, match a little earlier this week. Now, the captain has managed to draw enough firepower that the rangers can crawl forwards. Um, but now that they're pinned, they have zero ability to really affect the outcome of this battle. Their only hope is that the BAR forces them away, and that is, in fact, what happens. Lucky, lucky break there for Tittendox. 
Pack might get decrewed. Um, one more model got all it is it's got to drop. Mortar might get decrewed as well. But is this the German mortar or is this the is the American mortar? Okay. Um, so as this American push gets closer and closer to German headquarters, let's say they're taking greater and greater losses. Suppressed on one side, hewn down in droves on the other. These are your echelon squads over here. It's like I'm gonna bravely run forward and throw bazookas at you. One guy goes down already, which means I'm not sure he's gonna get that second one back. Pershing comes onto the field, and that's really the only thing they can get him back in this game. The Americans are down to a few squads of infantry. And actually, their troop-wise are only about two squads of effective infantry on the field. Being the captain and one rifleman squad, the other two are very, very wounded. And now this Pershing. Now, the Pershing will be a, quite capable in forcing the Stug to pee its pants. Um, and with the Tiger off quite a long time, it's really just up to the Pax and Faust, really, to push back the Pershing. It's not going to be an easy, easy thing at all. Well, one pack decides to open up already, though. The other one's on the eastern side of the map. Not going to do a whole lot. And it's still going to be... an American fuel... Uh, excuse me, American ticket train on the Germans. 309 to 425, 2134 into this game. And we got ourselves a match, don't we? Both mortars are still up for the Germans, and the Americans are trying desperately to get as many squads of infantry on the field as they can. Now, were I them, I would not be waiting to put out these Rangers, even though, even though they're excellent, excellent, excellent forces. I think it'd just be taking way too long to get them out, just way too expensive by comparison. But I expect Tintinox is going to call one of them in any minute. Enemy forces have 300 points. Shockingly enough, no. I kind of expected it to happen already, but nope, not the case. These BAR riflemen are going to be kind of an issue for the Grenadiers, at least initially, until the Grenadiers get some help from the Stug. And Shaker has got a chance to pick up the BAR. It doesn't decide to do so, unfortunately. Mortar's going to get thrust away by this a charging Pershing, and this Pack 40 is going to be like, wait a second. Guys, wait up for me! Stug's going to take another round. Going to get hurt rather badly. No. No, instead the Pack just... Excuse me, I said the Persian just backs away. So despite the fact that right now he has a clear, clear advantage in army size, Shaker is kind of running scared a little bit, mostly because of that Pershing. And when you think about it, the Pershing is one-third of the American army right about now. It's kind of understandable. The question is, as Shaker, what do you do? Do you stall out for... The Tiger? The Tiger's not coming for another five minutes or so. Actually, longer than that. The tiger's not coming for, like, almost ten. Or do you start throwing out all the soft AT you can and just try to, try to harry the guy to death? To me, it'd be kind of interesting to see a Pigren squad um, coming on the map with the double Shreks. With that, the two packs and the Stugs to kind of work in around the Pershing it is a potential potential tank killing opportunity. Of course, the converse of that is that it could go absolutely poorly and get completely shredded. Our riflemen are moving forwards, trying to throw a grenade on the house, and do, and barely don't take it down. Instead, we see a third pack coming out for Shaker, and that might be a better idea than what I was thinking here. If you can get that Pershing and really, really put a ton of anti-tank firepower on it, that could win you the game. To the west, we are going to see the Germans are threatened to take back a VP. Uh, a mortar and MG assault really happening over there. Kind of bizarre. Stuck sliding forwards, looking to get rounds out of the riflemen. But with the Pershing right there, that Stuck is going to get forced back super quick. And the rifleman's going to right back to actually doing what they're doing. So instead, the right the rangers are charging forward, trying to take out these grenadier squads. And they will do a very, very good job. But under such pressure as that they've got right now, Pershing has to charge in to really take off a little bit of the enemy firepower that's being thrust their way. 
One Stug is trying to curve around the full lengths of this heavy, heavy tank. It doesn't do so, but he encourages it enough to back away. But Shaker is not in such a crappy position anymore. He still is losing uh, VPs and losing them um, by the boatload. But he seems to have roughly stabilized. Tittendox, for his own particular uh, measure, is trying to get his troops back up to full strength. But any single time he comes anywhere close to the German base, he's taking a lot of firepower. Now, unfortunately for this pack, it had been a very, very good position to uh, loft rounds into the Pershing. But if that captain gets any more aggressive... The rear echelons, by the way. Um, if the captain gets any more aggressive, yep, the shoes have to back off more and more. And really, all that's left up here is a, a little bit of kind of incidental fire from the Stugs. And I have to bite my tongue, because incidental fire takes out half the squad in one shot. Yikes, and there goes the captain. Never mind, folks. We continue to wait, I think, for that Tiger tank to come out. I think that's what Shaker's trying to do. Just play for time. Just waste as much of your enemy's um, resources as possible. And then when it comes right down to it, you can call on that Tiger ASAP. It's still going to be another four minutes away. Try this again. Two minutes, 30 seconds away. I can do math. And somehow they also managed to lock down the western side of this map, too. It just it boggles my mind that somehow some of this action, some of these actions have actually occurred. Grenadiers going to get pushed back by these rangers, and the packs are going to book it because they know they're going to get completely shattered if they charge at all. Strokes in the meantime say, guys, this is where we shine. They come up with their short barrel guns and uh, start lofting rounds into them. Major, in the meantime, has pushed over to the western side, but it runs right smack dab into that machine gun and gets pushed away. And vanilla riflemen that have absolutely no veterancy whatsoever besides those BARs come up for half a second and realize, wait a second, we can't do jack against those tanks and back away. Um, not sure how these guys are getting popped on the med kit. Everybody's nowhere near them. Hmm. Oh well. But 208 to 425, yep. Shaker doesn't care right now the fact that he's draining points. He, he knows that the second he brings in a Tiger tank, the entire battle space is going to change. Of course, that guy's rather expensive, too. He's going to lose a fair amount of his units before he can do so. Off max smoke barrage, where's coming in? Ah, uh, right in front of this machine gun right here. Forcing back the mortar, allowing the riflemen to push forwards here. Now, what cannot push forwards is that these rangers cannot push forwards. The Pershing's going to come up and try to lend some long-range fire support, um, but it is not going to be a particularly positive experience. Now, the packs do have line of sight on top of that Pershing and assert their will. And we just did see another rifle squad getting dropped there. Looks like a, a Sherman's going to get called onto the field with three pack guns. It's not going to be a great idea. Um, for the Shaker's part, though, he did drop his own Pioneer Squad. And another Rifle Squad goes down for Tittendox. So Tittendox, who had a stranglehold on the map, is not effectively using his map advantage. He has a huge ticket advantage. He's got a huge power advantage just because of the Pershing. And instead of being either aggressive or entirely passive, he's doing these short kind of bizarre mini rushes that will just see him cry and, and, and find himself getting shattered without too much more um, issue, more of an issue. Question, I suppose, is well, what will Shaker decide to drop so that way he can bring this tiger in? We're losing a capture point. Now, were it me, I think I'd probably be dropping one of those pack guns pretty quickly. Maybe, maybe even allowing the mortar to get picked off. Heck, I might even get a mortar, like, um, grenade my own troops so that way I can bring in that tiger tank. Because that guy's going to be a beastly good force multiplier in the interim. Now, to the west, we're going to see that uh, the Pershing is going to slide forwards, trying and succeeding in pushing back that machine gun. What we will not see, however, we will not see the Germans really 
trying to push them back. Instead, it seems moving forward hesitantly, but consistently to take the eastern side of the map. So we're seeing a uh, complete reversal of the first, you know, 25 minutes of this game. And now we are going to see that with rear, not a rear echelon, with um, enough losses being inflicted, it is possible to call in that Tiger tank. Do it. Do it now. And Shaker says it is time to end this. The Tiger tank is on the field, and with all those packs, and the Strokes for that matter, that Sherman is definitely got out. Uh, it's really a question of how aggressively that Pershing can be slaughtered. And think about it, at this point, Tittendox really only has to guess what's being used by Shaker. Of course, he has seen the Stugs, but has he clicked on to make sure it's a Stug E as opposed to a Stug, Stug G or a Stug F? Either way, his major is taking a ton of firepower right now, um, not even incidentally. And that's a problem right there. Tiger Tank announces its presence and says, you know what, that's not your fuel point, that's mine. And the Rangers say, okay, sir, and back away calmly. Major, in the meantime, taking more rounds. Only one guy left. Is this, this the Major by himself? Yes, it is. It's the Major with his Colt. Rushing away, trying to get back to base. And it seems that the Pershing is getting prepped for its great joust, I would assume, against the German armor. But a Tiger on one side. You know, three pack guns that are not incredibly mobile, but mobile enough to really create a, a valley of death situation. And two Stugs, which are not great against armor, but are still good enough that you can't completely disregard them. You have to give a little bit of um, love to the German side. Of course, that love is being given in the form of a anti-tank shell, or a, of an AP shell that just blitzes absolutely everything. One of your late Artie Barrage might be a good idea here. You see that the, that the opponent is capturing an area. You see a big blob of infantry. Maybe dropping the light Artie Barrage down. He's going to consider about either moving his troops or moving his tanks. And I think, I really do think, We're losing a capture point. that um, if you force an opponent to pick between his tanks and his infantry, he's going to go for his um, tanks every time and twice on Saturdays. It's one of my favorite phrases recently. You can kind of tell I've been using it a lot in a lot of casts here. Um... And now with all of his troops so condensed, it, it is practically begging for an Artie Barrage. And now they have announced their presence. The Germans do come in and decide to say, guys, again, this is my land. This is all my land. And a Jackson is being made for the Americans, but I don't know if that's going to be enough to really seal the deal. I do know there's only one squad of Grenadiers out for Shaker, so he really only has one squad of mainland infantry. Pax, in the meantime, um, excuse me, the King Tiger, rather, not King Tiger, Tiger Tiger, um, gets a couple of rounds out on the Pershing with the help of a pack, but the Sherman lofting its smoke projectors to really cut off all line of sight, and a very, very lucky move for Tittendox. And now a foolish move by Tittendox to charge so much of this with one bazooka. It's a tiger tank, you ponces. Add in the fact that now there's a Grenadier squad with a BAR inside this, this bunker, which is very, very quickly going to have a machine gun. And I expect to see this rifle squad getting hammered even more than it already has. Right now we do see all of the army supply... Fort Tittendox is really over here to the east. It's just the Sherman over here to the west. Sherman might be able to take out Machine Gun. Nope, never mind the Machine Gun. That got pushed away just in time. But this Pack Gun's going to come forward, and if he manages to get one of those uh, shock rounds, that could be bad for said Sherman. N36 slides forward for half a second, says, wait a second, um, we have an awful high silhouette, and there's no one here to cover us. We, get, we really should back up. And they do so. Uh, Tiger, in the meantime, is sliding over here, gets a, takes, takes up a nice deflate position, and decides that, you know what? Screw deflate. I don't want to actually hide and take cover. I'm going to go start taking uh, pot shots at this captain, who's being suppressed by this machine gun, and getting hammered by everybody else. So, again, valley of death situation consistently. And Jackson shifts forward, takes one round at the king, uh, excuse me, the tiger. I keep calling it king tiger. It's not a king tiger. 
I had a tiger. And the pack 40 say, you know, you don't pick out my tanks, those are mine, and the Jackson buys it super, super quick. Now, even more distressing for the Americans is the fact that as though the Sherman's in on the fray, one round more, and there goes the Sherman. And now here's the Pershing. The Pershing is charged forwards as well. So really what you're looking for here is probably going to be a drop of the Tiger. But once that Tiger drops, it doesn't matter because there's still all those packs and the two Stugs. So you probably going to take him out, um, but it's not going to be easy. And frankly, he can call in another Tiger within about a minute's time. So that's not going to be too great either. Bouncing the last couple of rounds too. Dear God, what is going on here? Shug, um, E also manages to go and throws out target weak point. Great, great idea there. And Light Artie Barrage is coming down on top of the Major's retreat point. Oh dear God. TOT rounds coming in. There goes the Ambo. Will the Major go down? I don't know. But all of the American troops. Yep, there he goes. The major and all that's left is one squad's worth of infantry and a lone Pershing which has now just perished. Alas, poor York, I knew him well. Tindox tap shot just ends the replay right immediately and Shaker who had been up against it for quite a bit of time managed to pull it out in the end so well done there. Well done Tindox for being as aggressive. I was definitely enjoying watching that. By the end of the day, it seems that Shaker has pulled it out. So thanks so much for the replay, Shaker. Uh, you know you can always send me Mormon if you want to. And guys, I will see you all next time. This is Connell Work signing off. Take it easy.